Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, Design in Real Time with Creo Simulation Live. With PTC Creo Simulation Live, you get instant feedback on your design ideas and changes as you work directly in your design environment. And uh, today you'll see how PTC with ANSYS makes it possible on, your, on today's webcast. Um, let me tell you a little bit about today's presenter. We have today with us Emily Pinto. Emily is an application engineer for PTC in the Virtual Center for Excellence. And uh, I want to show you our product page at novedge.com where you can find uh, PTC Creo Simulation Live. And where at the moment we have an incredible promotion. So for the first 10 takers only, if you get uh, two uh, licenses of uh, Career Simulation Live for subscription, you can get a free NVIDIA card for a value of over $1,000. So um, don't waste any time. Uh, Free, a free card, it's a pretty good deal. All right, and um, I want to remind you that we're also on all the social media, and if you want to catch up on the latest promotion and new releases, you know where to find us. And today's webinar will be recorded and post uh, uh, later on today on Vimeo and YouTube. Just search for Novage. And now, without further ado, I'm going to switch uh, my screen so you can take a look at Emily's screen, which is much more interesting. Okay, just a few seconds for the transition. Here we go. Take it away, Emily. Okay, can you see my screen all right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, hi, my name is Emily Pinto. I'm an application engineer uh, with PTC in the Virtual Center Excellence, like um, she mentioned a minute ago. And I'm going to talk about simulation live today. So CSL, as we call it, uh, brings real-time simulation abilities into uh, your CAD environment. So uh, PTC partnered with ANSYS last year and brought their best-in-class discovery simulation technology inside of Creo Parametric to allow engineers to access uh, fast and accurate analysis results as they're designing. So some of the challenges that this partnership hoped to address, uh, you know, associated with traditional analysis technology is that usually analysis can take uh, quite a long time to run, whether that's minutes or hours, it's taking time out of the design process. And on top of that, it can be hard to set up. It can take a while to simplify the model to get it to somewhere that you're able to run the analysis, and it can be difficult to make sense of the results. Um, so for a lot of reasons, sometimes this product, uh, project is sent out to an expert, so sent out to an analysis team. Um, and this process means that it's just not feasible to use. After every single design decision you make, it, it would take too much time, uh, you know, every time you make a small edit to, to simplify and, and make it on your analysis model and run the analysis and send it to another team. So um, what happens is that engineers have to make some design decisions to get the model to a really good point that they think it's ready for analysis before they go to that stage. So designing without results, uh, you know, in order to get it far enough along that it's worth to take that time out of the design process. And sometimes this late stage analysis can catch problems um, that then, you know, engineers have to go back and spend time reworking and fixing. And it's really just not it's not great for innovation. It's not great for an efficient design process. So um, simulation live is the solution. Um, so this is live simulation capabilities and fast feedback as you're designing. So this is a simulation tool. Uh, it's a, a very new type of simulation tool, a new type of analysis that was designed to be used early in the design process because it gives such instant results and it's so simple, simple to set up. So this isn't intended to replace your high fidelity analysis tool. If you're doing late stage analysis, you know, you're gonna still wanna do that late stage analysis. Um, this is intended to be used while, uh, by engineers. So by engineers while they're designing, it just runs in the background. And as the model is built, as engineers make changes, uh, they can get immediate feedback on each design decision uh, you know, that, that they make. So this acts kind of as a guide for engineers to see how their changes, how their edits move them towards their goal. Uh, so you know, the idea here is you're gonna be able to make better design decisions 
uh, try new innovative ideas, some daring ideas that uh, that you might not normally try, but if you can see how they work out right away, you know, maybe you can do that. And then you can catch issues as they appear. So instead of waiting for that late stage analysis to find the problem that would require rework, see the problems as they pop up and, and know that your model is, you know, ready to go and is going to pass that that final analysis because you know all of the stresses and, and all of the issues are under control. Um, so to go through some of the capabilities and then I will jump into a, um, a demonstration, show you what it looks like inside of Creo. Uh, but we can talk first about some of the capabilities that make, make this technology able to work in this way. So it's easy to use. It's not for an expert. It's not for an, anal uh, an analyst. It's simple to set up. It's easy to view results. And it was made for you know, the engineer to use during the design process. Um, so you don't have to modify your model or export and import because it's inside Creo. So it doesn't distract from that design activity. You don't have to take time to simplify anything. It'll work on whatever CAD model you currently have, you know, flaws and all. Um, there's a very powerful linear analysis that gives you really instantaneous results and feedback. We're talking, you know, not minutes and hours, just a couple of seconds, uh, you know, that it, that it does in the background. So this is a really great tool because it is inside of your Creo parametric environment and it's set up, you know, the user interface is set up in a very similar way. It's, it's a consistent user interface. So you can pick it up really easily. This isn't a whole separate analysis tool that you're gonna need to learn how to use. It's gonna be familiar menus, familiar toolbars, um, and very simple constraints and loads. So it's not very complicated. This isn't a huge undertaking to get this, um, you know, new technology kind of up and running in your design process. Um, and so though this is ANSYS technology, just to give you a little bit of, of a background, um, it's completely inside your Creo parametric environment. So you really truly are getting the complete ANSYS technology inside of your complete Creo uh, you know, parametric. So before this partnership, um, ANSYS had this as a separate tool, you know, just as an ANSYS tool, and there were some limited direct editing capabilities. So the power of this tool is that you can edit while it while the simulation is running. So, and, but ANSYS didn't have, a, you know, a full parametric environment, a full parametric editing tool to be able to use with this with the simulation. So it was difficult for designers to use it effectively because you could try out some changes in the discovery simulation engine, but you really didn't have all of those modeling capabilities. And then if you liked something that you made, you had to go back into your regular CAD tool and, and push those to the official model. Um, and so by bringing this into Creo, we were able to give engineers all of those instant analysis capabilities and, and make those edits on your CAD model, however you usually model and you know, on that final model, if, if that's the model that you're working on. Um, because it's so easy to set up, uh, you're able to, to do this very quickly. So structural, modal, and thermal analysis, um, you know, you're able to set them up and then focus on your refinement, refinement and, and um, you know, it, in, on your design process. So this is just gonna automatically update. This isn't something you have to keep uh, you know, playing around with setup every time. You can just set it up in the beginning and then keep going on with your new your normal process. Um, and so this is a uh, proprietary ANSYS technology, so you're not going to be able to, to edit the mesh, which is wonderful because that is a whole separate skill in and of itself uh, that you really don't want to have to bring into your engineering process. You know, that's very much an analysis uh, task. So this wonderful auto mesher is going to do everything for you. It's it's almost instant. Uh, you know, can mesh anything. There's no issue with complexity or, or you know anything like that. So you're not you're not going to be able to edit it, but you, you know you really hopefully won't need to. Um, so it'll do all of this in the background. All of the everything associated with analysis is going to be done for you. So the reason that this can run so quickly is that it's on the GPU instead of the CPU. So um, there are some hardware requirements around this. Uh, the NVIDIA CUDA graphics card is required to run uh, CSL, Creo Simulation Live. Um, there's a minimum of four gigabytes of RAM on your GPU, uh, but it, it is better to have eight gigabytes of RAM on your GPU. Um, and, and, you know, there are a couple different, um, you know, hardwares and tests that you can you can see if you're computer is compatible. Uh, so now I can jump into our demonstration. 
Let me just pull this up. So I'll exit. Okay, uh, so here we're looking at our Polaris snowmobile assembly. Uh, and this is a real, a real CAD data set. We're gonna look at this um, cast iron chassis here. So first we're gonna, we're gonna use CSL and we're just gonna look at how, how it's set up, how it runs, and then we're gonna start making some changes, start modeling with it, and then go back to the assembly level, look at that. Um, we're gonna start with structural and then I, I can show you modal and thermal then at the end too. So first we have to choose a material. Uh, it does use the material properties to get those analysis results. So you do need a material to be able to run it. Uh, and you can use either something from our library or uh, you know, custom material. Um, only, linear, uh, only linear aspects will be considered. So if you have a nonlinear material, the nonlinear parts will just uh, kind of be ignored. So no problem there. And then we can start our simulation. So here we have options for structural, thermal, and modal. And we're going to start with the structural. And you can have you know, as many simulations in the simulation tree as you want. We're in our little simulation tab. So just you know, jumping from the model tab to the simulation tabs just a click away. And then we have all of these great tools. So our simulation tree lists all of the simulations that we have set up that we want to run at a moment's notice. And then you know, our tools at the top is for setting and managing those. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, pick some constraints, put some constraints on our model. Uh, and this is very similar to simulate. If, if you use simulate, um, we can just select the surface that we want and add our forces. So we can choose the magnitude, you know, X, Y, and Z direction, or we can choose, um, you know, the magnitude direction or the force components, I'm sorry. And then of course, select our, our units. We can select multiple forces at once. So again, very similar to simulate, just trying to get these through as quickly as possible. Um, and, and you're gonna have these nice visuals for what's selected in this menu to walk you through it. So it's really not too complicated. Everything that you, you need to know is right here. Uh, and then this is the end of our, our setup. Uh, so all we had to do was add those constraints and loads and we're ready to, to run the simulation. So you'll notice there was no simplification. This part has a lot of, you know, rounds, chamfers, holes, uh, you know, small parts, what, what, what may have you. Um, and there's nothing that you need to do in order to run this. We can just jump right into the simulate button here. And when we click it, we'll see that our results are automatically displayed on our part. So here we're looking at the von Mises stress and it's displayed graphically uh, according to this legend over on the right. And we can see you know, exactly where our high stresses and our low stresses are. And then if we click on our, our result options button, this is gonna show uh, all the different result types that, that you might wanna see. So everything's calculated in that first, you know, that since the simulation run, all of these are already calculated. It doesn't run each time you change it. Uh, though it's only a couple of seconds. So you can look at the normal stress, the shear stresses, uh, principal and reaction forces. And we're gonna look at the deformation. We can also show the maximum and the minimum, which is nice. We can see there's a little blue circle and a little red circle that appeared at the highest and lowest points of deformation. Um, and then we can also animate. Uh, so here we have a couple options to see. And this really goes along with, you know, the, the main objective of simulation live. Uh, you know, we can look at the exaggerated or the true deformation to show what it will really look like in real life, because this is just supposed to give you an idea of how's my part going to behave? How have these, how, how's my design doing in the situation that, you know, that I expect it to be in? So just being able to see it graphically and animate it, it's going to give you a really good idea of Am I hitting the mark? Is this, is this you know, a, a good idea? Is this ready to go to that a final analysis? Or do I need to keep doing some work? You know, this isn't quite where I, I thought that it would be. Um, so it's really just guiding you through those decisions. Um, so coming back to our von Mises stress, that uh, kind of final, you know, sums up the, the process. So we, we set it up, we, um, we ran the analysis, we ran the simulation, and then we viewed the results. And so now let's make some edits because that's really where the power of this tool comes in. We can say, oh, I see that there's a high stress here. It looks like that might be outside my, uh, you know, 
my goal for how, how high the stress should be. So we can put a simulation probe on it. The simulation probe is just a tool to tell us a little bit more about the, the surface or, or point that we're looking at. So here we can see the exact value of the stress. So we don't have to worry about you know, trying to interpret the legend. And then we can make some changes. So maybe we need to get this under 50 uh, megapascals. Well, let's make some changes. So you can edit however you normally edit, however you normally design. Here we're gonna use the flexible modeling to just pull this rib out a little bit. And then when we hit accept, we can see that it automatically updates in the background. We don't even have to do anything in here. We already have our stress as 52, uh, so 52 megapascals. So then you know, you're able to make the, de the informed decision to say, well, do I want to keep editing? Do I want to keep making changes? Could this be optimized even more? Is there some kind of innovation I could do here? Or, it, yeah, this is right on target. This is perfect. You know, we're ready to go. So now we have uh, our stress under 49 megapascals uh, and, uh, I'm sorry, under 50 megapascals. And we're going to be fairly confident now going into the analysis stage, the final stage, that everything's going to pass. So we can move on to our next design activity, uh, you know, feeling confident that this is, this is a great part that we've just made. We can see our, our stress has moved into the, into the leg, um, which you know, is, is a good thing. So something else we like to talk about while we are talking about CSL is design exploration session. So I'm just gonna open one up right here. And the design exploration session, if you're not familiar, is another extension. Um, for Creo Parametric that helps you to manage and organize uh, your different versions of your model. So if you're making some changes and you like it, but you're not sure you know, which direction you wanna go in for a product update or which direction you wanna go in for a new idea, um, you're gonna be able to open this checkpoint tree and then save off versions that you like as a checkpoint. Um, so if you wanna revisit it, if you wanna go back and branch off in a new way, if you wanna come back and, and bring it to a design review, you're gonna be able to do that to see all those different versions of the, of the design that you've made. And this is really great with CSL because you can see not just those different designs, but how that affects the stresses and the deformation and everything you know, important to the behavior and performance of your product. So you're really gonna be able to get a sense for what's the best option here, what's the best way to go. So maybe we don't like the stress here still, or, or we, you know, we want to try to reduce it some more. We think, hey, I think I can do better. I'm, I'm going to put a simulation probe here um, just to be sure this is a sensitive spot that, you know, this doesn't get too high. I know that this is pretty close to the limit, but we really need, we really, I think, should try something else. So we're going to add a trajectory rib and just fill out the different uh, parameters for it. But again, if you model parametrically or, or however you normally model, you can do that here. And when we hit update, we can see that it automatically, it automatically recalculates in the background. So now our stress has gone up in this flat section a little bit. You'll see that our stress in the rib has gone way down. So maybe we like this idea. Maybe we want to revisit it or show someone else. Uh, we can save it as a checkpoint. And now we're able to, to come back to that if we need to. So if we like this, we can push it through to our final model. We can save the session on its own, uh, or we could just completely exit out of it and it's like nothing happened. So there's no risk to losing your original model. Creo knows what you came into the session with and it saves that you know, automatically. So if you don't like the changes you've made, you can come back here and you don't have to worry about all those save as files. So uh, we're just gonna delete some of those some of those simulation probes and then hop into our assembly level again. So at the assembly level, it works very similarly. Um, same you know, loads and constraints, same process. Uh, now just for the full assembly instead of a single part. So being able to see how all these parts that you've built are working together. You know, that can be a little bit less intuitive than a single part. You have your forces set up and, and your constraints set up and you want to make sure that it's going to do exactly what you think it's going to do uh, and that everything's going to pass that analysis and that everything's up up to you know the goals that you've set for yourself so we can um now that we have all the constraints and loads we're just going to hit simulate and you'll see it's almost just as quick as a single part in only a couple of seconds we can see the results already displayed and uh, we're able to to see where our stresses are so to view some of the result options, 
we have different rendering methods. So we have all the same result types as we did for the single part, you know, nothing changes there. It's still a structural simulation. Um, so, but we can just highlight some of these rendering methods here. So we have um, a couple of different ones. We're gonna look at max value, which uh, just shows, you know, I don't care where the maximum is, if it's inside the part, if it's on the back, bring it to the front so I can see it, you know, to the surface that I'm looking at. And then I know where all my problem areas are. And you can see here the maximum is still there. So, and you know, if we need to change that, we can go back to that part and we can look at the deformation. So this is quite a high deformation in the front. You know, maybe you didn't expect it to be quite so high. Uh, and you want to make sure that, that that's taken care of. So we can put a simulation probe on it uh, and start making some design changes just like we did at the part level. Uh, so we're just going to add our point here to show, say what's the maximum deformation on this corner to make sure that we don't have any problems uh, or just to see if we can maximize the performance. If we think we can do better, we want to try out some new ideas. So instead of making a design change, uh, you know, a, a design uh, edit, we can just bring in some parts that are suppressed. Uh, you know, if, if, for example, if we knew that the deformation was going to be an issue, we want to see how this part does, uh, this subassembly does at minimizing that, we can see now in just a matter of seconds how effective that design really is. So you see we've come down to 0.3 millimeters from about one. So. So now we're able to make that decision to say, yeah, this is a great part. This is a, a, an effective subassembly. I'm ready to go. This is ready to move on to the next stage of the process. Or you could say that, you know, they, there's, still, there's still more innovation. There's still more uh, performance that we can work on here. So to look, uh, that kind of sums up this, the structural to look at some of the other um, uh, analysis types. We're going to look at the modal first. So this is very similar. You see, we have this here in our simulation study. We're just gonna add our loads and constraints, or sorry, our constraints. Uh, so it is a little bit different that you're not adding loads. You're just gonna look at the, the mode at the end. Um, and we select all of those the same way as we did for the structural, same way as you do for simulate. And we're gonna suppress this group here again, uh, just to see what it looks like without the subassembly. And then we're going to be able to see the difference that that makes on, on our performance of this part. So once we hit simulate, again, only a couple of seconds, and we can see all of the deformation graphically on our assembly. So to look at our result options, here we're looking at mode one. So this is the deformation you know, result uh, associated with that mode. And of course, we can animate it to get a better idea of what it's going to do. And then we can, of course, look at other modes. So we have options of one through six. Um, so if we take a look at mode four, for example, now we're able to see you know, the deformation has, has definitely changed and the, the display has changed so we can see where that high point is again. So great, now we know what's going on with our assembly. Let's, let's see how well uh, you know, our subassembly design, how effective that it is at, at helping our modal analysis here. So, it automatically updates as we bring those parts in and we're able to look at different results. So look at mode four again, we can see our deformation is quite different now um, and to see what that looks like animated, again, just guiding you uh, to a better product, guiding you to better design decisions. We're able to look at all the different modes. So mode one's quite different here too, um, you know, seeing that the deformation is much higher, but lower, I'm sorry. Um, so that, that sums up our, our structural and modal. And then our last, um, our last analysis type is our thermal. So here we have an engine that we're gonna, gonna look at. And it's again, very similar. So back into our simulation tab, down to our simulation tree, we're gonna look at our loads and constraints. Um, here we have a different loads and constraints for thermal analysis. Of course, we have boundary conditions, uh, which are convection and prescribed temperature. And you can see graphically, it tries to help you know what's going on, give you some arrows to see, you know, this is the surface you're working with. This is what boundary conditions you've put on it so far. So here's the convection and the bulk temperature. And then we can add our loads. So we have heat flow and heat flux, depending on you know, what your situation is. 
And we can add that just as easily with this little menu and choose our units. And again, now our setup is done and you know we're pretty much ready to go. So it's very quick, very easy. And once this is set up, you don't have to set it up again. Uh, and it only takes a couple of seconds. So if you're toggling between different simulations, you wanna go from modal to thermal to structural, you know, as you make design changes, it's only gonna take a couple of seconds for you to see exactly what that's done. Our result options here are a little bit different from modal and thermal. Um, you know, we have different rendering methods. So we can see composite, which is, you know, can be useful, um, especially for thermal. We can change our units, which does change it up in the legend as well. Everything's connected. And we're able to know, uh, you know, where our minimums and maximums are to make sure that everything's going well. So this sums up my, my demonstration portion of, of this webinar. I'm gonna talk now a little bit more about uh, what this means for your process, what this means for your, your company uh, in terms of value that you can see from using CSL in your design process. So here we're back up to our PowerPoint. So early analysis and often, or early and often analysis is able to, to guide engineers as they design, uh, which can result in you know, less rework, less errors, so lower life cycle costs, you know, getting that final model, that, that right model faster the first time. So that also reduces your time to market, of course. Uh, you can design to realize a price premium. So having the information about exactly how your part's gonna perform while you're making all of those you know, minor or major design decisions that's gonna allow you to, to push the envelope, to innovate, to, to really get a higher quality out of your part. Um, so again, increase your quality and performance there, and overall just reducing your product development cost. So that um, sums up my presentation. Thank you, Emily. Thank you so much. We'll stick around a couple of minutes uh, to see if we have any coming questions. In the meantime, I want uh, to show you again uh, our product page where you can find Creo CSL. And I want to remind everybody of this amazing promotion that uh, just went live. If you buy two subscription of Creo Simulation Live, you get a free NVIDIA card. Uh, with your purchase and the value is uh, runs above a thousand dollars. So and this promotion it's only for the first 10 takers um, Act now or uh, you know, or you're gonna lose this incredible opportunity to take out a free media card home and uh, Emily I don't see questions um, the your demo spoke for itself I want to thank everybody for attending. And I also want to remind you that I've been recording this presentation. And if you want to watch it again, discuss it with some colleagues, you can always find it at noveg.com uh, or on our Noveg um, channels on YouTube and Vimeo. Thank you so much for attending today. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye, Amelie. Have a great day. Great. Thank you.